Oh, hello everybody. Looks like I'm alive. Oh, my sound is a bit high. Hang on a second. Let me turn down a bit. There we go. Um, I'm really tempting fate today because um, before I do anything else, I'm going to let you know that the weather is all over the place and it's really playing hell with the cameras at the moment. So the problem, this is the problem I have with streaming in natural light is I have to keep running around and, and changing the exposure of the cameras. It's so frustrating. And it's been a perfect day for painting. It's been overcast and drizzling all day, which is great. And then suddenly I start painting and also set up the cameras. Um, and what should happen, but... Inevitably, the sun comes out. I'm just going to check the comments are working. <clears throat> yeah, good. So if you're watching anyway, on YouTube or on Facebook. Please say hi. Drop me a little note to let me know that you're there. It's nice to know if someone is watching. So today, um, this is I've done two sessions on this painting already, both of which I've streamed. And today I am... Um, well, maybe we're going to finish it today. We'll see what happens. Today, mostly, I want to sort out the modelling of this, this pot here. I'm going to leave all of this. I think probably won't do any more on that. I'm fairly happy with those as they are. Hello, Alison. Nice to see you. Hi, Stephanie. Um, so just, I'm thinking about values. So I've mixed a couple of colours up ready. And that, I think, should work pretty well value-wise. Just want to be careful I don't overdo the modeling on this pot here. So this is what I'm thinking about as my kind of the light, light value probably around here. The, it's nice this pot because it has some really subtle hue changes and chroma changes across the surface, but they're, um, they're kind of secondary to, to getting the, the modeling of the form, so I don't want to get too involved in them too soon. I want to make sure I've got something that looks around. <clears throat> Promising start. It looks nice and round before I... Uh, Before I start trying to think about any of the little differences. So if anyone knows like what the local color is, the local color of this, the local value of this pot is like, um, it's about a value five. So it's about halfway up the value range. Mm, it's looking better already. So for the lightest part of it around here, I've gone up to about value 7, which is what this color is here, value 7. And this is a value 5, which is about the local. And I find a lot of the time with local colors, they tend to, where you hit the local value, tends to be just a little bit before it goes into the shadow, so like about here. And the chroma comes up a little bit there, so I'm bringing in a little bit more chroma. Um, the yellow ochre on its own is a little bit too yellow orange, so I'm adding a little bit of red in, just kind of doing it on the fly. I just want the feeling of this form turning. You know, when I've got that, I'll be pretty happy. 
seems to be coming reasonably quickly. And then, and then once that's there, I can start thinking about, well, how much detail I want on this pot. And at the moment, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not sure. Got a flat bit here where it's all the same value doesn't look right. I'm undecided about how much to, to finish the pot. It's going to be hard to know until I put this in, I suppose, so maybe I should do that first. And I've oiled out the painting before I started as well. There's lots of room to play on this pot. I could do it really simply and then not take anything away from the pears, but I kind of, it's such a beautiful pot. I'm, I'm really tempted just to, to maybe get, if today I can get like the, the panel covered, um, then maybe, uh, so I can see every, how everything is working. That would be nice. And then maybe think about, how much I want to develop the pot. I have this kind of ongoing indecision about how finished I like to paint. And uh, sometimes I feel, oh, look at the cameras, man. The exposure's all over the place already. Sun has come out again. So I've got to knock the exposure down. Really is all over the place today. You'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry about this. It is a nightmare streaming in natural light when the conditions are really changeable. It's really challenging because I'm my eyes are adjusting as I look at the painting and the subject. But unless I'm constantly checking what's happening with the cameras, inevitably the focus of them goes out a little bit. The um, the exposure, sorry, not the focus, the exposure goes out and I have to keep adjusting them. But I thought, you know what, I want to keep up my, now I've started doing my Wednesday streams, I want to keep them going. So I thought, well, even though conditions aren't perfect likewise today for streaming, they're all right for painting, but not good for streaming. I thought, well, I'll stream anyway. Wonder. I am says where are you located? I'm located in the UK in the Cotswolds. In the South Cotswolds. Really, really beautiful area or countryside where I live. Out in the sticks. Surrounded by fields and Woodland, it's very pretty. I think we need a bit more chroma in the shadows as well. So I always set up my palette like this so I have a light to shadow so that when I'm modeling a form like this I can just um I can just mix from one into the other until I get you know the values that I want and then I can 
start to model it a little bit more carefully once the main values are kind of in and I'm happy. I find it really helps to have the, the values really carefully laid out on the palette. So I'm going to want at some point to, if I can get this working, I'm going to want at some point to be to be carefully blend those values so that it gets more of a rounded feel to it and not doesn't look too um, like here. I've got a bit of a line where there's an obvious change in value. It can take a lot of fiddling, in my experience, for me at least, to get these things right for it to really look the right kind of rounded. And there's little areas of highlight on it. I wonder if I can start just to try a couple of those and see where they would, how they would look. I don't know if it if it shows really on the on the screen that I've got on the pot, but um, the actual pot has these kind of lines in relief running around it. Like a nice effect, and here it's here it loses those lines, kind of disappear. Alison says, it's beautiful, those lost and found ed edges. Thank you. You know I'm obsessed with my edges. <laughs> I do spend a lot of time thinking about edges. This one especially. I want the whole thing to just disappear into nothingness over here. I'm leaving all this section over here because I'm liking the way it's kind of disappearing into nothingness at the moment. And um, I think I'm probably going to leave that like that right the way through the painting and see what happens. So I just want to kind of blend this pot a little bit more with the values, smooth the values out so they're a bit more uniform across the surface and I get a bit more of the roundness of the pot. And once I've got that, then I'm, I might play a little bit with bringing some texture into it. Well, actually, I'm kind of doing that a little bit already. What's curious, though, is that this is all shadow here, but up here the, the light goes further round. I'm not sure why that is. Something to do with the form. Right up to... where the neck starts. And it drops chroma a lot there, so I'm gonna mix it black and white so I can bring that in. So now, now it's overcast. So I've got to bring the exposure and the cameras back up. <laughs> what a mess on. I guarantee you in about two minutes, 
Looks like it's going to rain suddenly. It's got really grey and dark. The cameras struggle when it's dark. But I guarantee you the sun will come out in a minute again. And I'll have to bring the exposure back up. But at least you can, hopefully you can see what's happening at the moment anyway. Got a bit of a line here. I don't like that line. So I'm looking, I'm pretty happy that the thing looks round now. And I'm just looking for uh, like imperfections in the surface. You know, when you, when you, you know, when you've got the values of something pretty right, something like this, which is rounded, when you look at it and there are dents and, and flat bits in it that, you know, you get the impression of dents and flat bits that you, that aren't there in the original thing, which means your mind is reading it as a, if your mind is reading an area that you haven't modeled well as a dent or a flat bit, then the values must be pretty much, must be pretty good for that to happen. I always tell people on the color course, if they manage to get a dent in something that isn't actually there, that they're doing something right. I'm trying to get this The little shoulder here of the of the top of the pot has more light on it. Let me get that right. And then the cast shadows. That sorry, the edge shadow here starts quite abruptly. That's too abrupt. Yeah. Thank you, Junior. That's nice. Hey, you're very welcome, Lida. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Kathy. Glad you're enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying this one a lot myself. Just actually, this the pot part here has gone rather faster than I anticipated. It just needed a bit of just needed a bit of love to help it begin to appear rounded. So last time, I don't know if you remember, this is like last Wednesday, a week ago is the last time I worked on this. And at that point I was kind of, um, I was trying to set the value balance right between the light side of the pairs and the light side of the pot because if I don't get that right you know it's very tempting to use here comes the sun I'm gonna to have to bring the camera exposure down it's very tempting to use all of my values on this pot but if I do that's a bit clumsy if I do then I will lose the pairs the, the light side of the pairs won't look right anymore so I've got to be really careful about that I've got to be careful not to. Not to let the light side of the pot get too light. I've got to keep it under control. At the moment, I think it's all right. I think, I, you know, I think it's okay. It looks like a, it's sitting there, a stone pot. I want to fill this in now, I think. I wasn't really expecting the pot to go that quickly, to be honest. I thought I was probably going to spend quite a while fighting with it today. But it's been, it's played nice. Still got quite a bit to resolve though. All of this, you know, I want to, I want to cover all the white bits of the panel. So I can see that relationship working. 
Wanda says, I just looked up the Cotswolds, such a beautiful area. Yeah, it really is. Hello, Michelle, good to see you. You haven't missed much. How long have I been on? Probably, uh, oh, 20 minutes. I just, I just was working on sorting out this pot a little bit. Um, I want to, trying to get my pot round to look round and not like a, just a flat slab of colour. And that's it really so far. Something's bothering me about this bit here. It doesn't look quite right. <clears throat> oh. And I'm having such a nightmare with the light today. It's up, it's down, it's all over the place. Never mind. Hello, Blake, nice to see you. She says, I find it harder to model a, a neutral piece than a high chroma piece. Mm. Yeah, it can be. Ron, Francis, good to see you. It's been a long time, my friend. It's after midnight for me, so I can't stay. Just wanted to say how nice it was to stumble on your stream. Nice work. Thanks, Ron. It's really good to see you. I hope you're well and still painting those incredibly wonderful pieces. Your body should look up Ron Francis on Google. Some amazing stuff. All right, I was actually thinking about having this disappear entirely, that side of that pot. Um, I'm in two minds about it now. I really am. Should it disappear? We could have like a really subtle chroma change there. Um, might be nice. A little bit lighter. Gone a bit too far. Would you two get so obsessed with like a tiny chroma change between a background and a shadow of an object? Staffed, really. It won't make that much difference to the painting, probably. Can't help it though. But now I've screwed up the, the drawing of the pot. Too busy fiddling about with. Stuff that doesn't matter. Focus, Paul. Let's fill in this bit. Dark up there. But there is a hint of light. And I can um, use this now to help that. This side of the pot stand out. But it needs to belong to what's on the other side here. So this side, it wants to be slightly lighter than The, the shadow side of the pot. 
so that you can just see it standing out against the background there. I'm painting it closer than it looks in reality because I have less values to play with. Bring it up a tiny bit. So I'm just looking at this relationship here with this shadow a little bit more, a tiny bit more chroma than the background and slightly darker. Camera's blown out. <gasps> Sun coming in the window. My word, what time is it? I actually meant to start earlier than I have today. Sun comes in the window. Um, becomes a big problem for the cameras. I can carry on for a little while painting, but the cameras really struggle with it. The interesting thing I've been thinking about actually quite a bit lately is uh, to do with photography and taking pictures of of what we paint, you know, but taking pictures of the subject is that um, you, when you take a picture of something, the camera adjusts itself to what's within the frame. So if I took a picture of this subject, this shadow area here would be incredibly dark. This shadow area over this side in the background, you would it would probably pretty much disappear. I'm just trying to resolve this, get a nice, get this pot standing out nice. I'm really happy with the way this is going. Um, whereas if I look at this when I'm painting from life, this is what I think is, is possibly one of the differences between painting from life and painting from a photo is that I look at the shadow on this side in the context of the room and there are darker values in the room. So do I paint it as the darkest value in my subject and make it as dark as I possibly can? Or do I paint it in the context of the room and make it not quite my lowest value? Does that make sense? It's one of the differences, I think, between, you know, because value is movable, it, you know, it doesn't have to be um, really liking this. You don't have to paint things like exactly the value that they, that they are. Most of the time you can't anyway. I want a hard edge there. And this should start sooner. So I'm mumbling to myself while I'm trying to think through. Too dark. Got a dark bit. So the values in the painting here are not exactly the same as the values in the subject because I can't, oh, I painted over my, my stick. I can't paint those values. I could reach them on the pot, but then the light side of the pairs would not be light enough and they would, uh, begin to disappear. They wouldn't look as pear-like. Everything has got to have its place in the relationships. How am I doing? Is this working all right? What do you think?
RT says, will you paint in the bottle's cash shadow? Well, I've kind of suggested it. I, it's one of those things. It comes and goes depending on the light at the moment. You mean the shadow on the back here? I'm wanting to leave this very vague. I may resolve it later, but I'm not sure. What I really want to do is fill in this bit now and see what's going to happen. You know, because my 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 stone pot is is quite happily sitting there now. It's not too bad that I could definitely improve it in places, but it is getting there. So that is clumsy. I'm going to blend it out a bit. Um, we're a bit uh, sun is coming in the room the camera is struggling poor little camera has a hard time with the light sorry I'm not doing a very good job today of keeping up with the with the messages uh, so yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not sure about that cash shadow. I've suggested a bit of it and I'm not sure about the rest. We'll have to wait and see. But I generally don't want, you know, I'm interested in this sort of area here. And if I paint everything just as it looks over there, I'm a little bit worried that I'll detract, you know. In the last session, I, I did a bit more work over here. And it seemed to me that every mark I put down detracted somehow from the painting. And I, so I, I just decided it would be better left alone. Alison likes it not all covered. I'm sorry to break it to you, but I'm about to start on the cloth, Alison. <laughs> I want it. I, I, I think this one, there's going to be some bits poking through. Like, I'm happy with that there. I'll leave that there. But I think uh, I, I want that cloth in there. You know, I like paint, painting cloth as well. Patrick, I would love to talk out with you and paint too. That's kind of what we're doing, but, you know. Michelle says, are you going to do the cloth or leave it loose? I'm go I need to fill in those values down there anyway. And um, the color is, you know, the, the hue is wrong. Uh, so I don't know yet. Not undecided, Michelle. David says, Ari, that pair, after so many years trying to paint what I can see, I now found it hard not to do that and paint what I don't see. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, believer that we what we paint is um because we're so limited in our value range what we paint is um a combination of what we see and what we know so you know stuff about how to model form david you know so you so then you you know you put that in you know how to balance values in a painting so you know you, you put that in so if I painted that, that pot lighter, God, now we're getting overcast again. If I painted the pot lighter, as it actually looks, then I would have some real trouble with the balance of the overall painting. At the moment, the pairs are sitting nicely. They're coming out quite nicely, I think. Thank you, Janice. Laura says, cameras lie. They do. Well, they tell their version of the truth. <laughs> I suppose it's it's fair to say. Let me think about. I want to mix. I want to mix a, a a general color for this cloth. I want to get something in there now. I've got transparent red oxide in my white, which is a terrible idea. I want it to be. Low chroma, I want to drop the value a little bit from what's at, what I actually see because I want the highlight on the pair, I think, to be light. Apart from this bit here, it can be very light. Um, but it wants to go a little bit towards a very low chroma purple blue. No, really, it does. Trust me on this. Um, So I'm, I'm off the pot now, I'm thinking about the cloth. I'm happy, the pot's moved on a bit. So I'm happy, so I'm thinking about the cloth. So that's my lightest, like a... 
little bit of black, little bit of quinacridone rose. Give me a very low chroma, too much quinacridone rose. Give me a very low chroma, slightly reddish purple, more black because I put too much quinacridone rose in. And then it's in the shadow bits, it goes more orange. Values are going to need to be close, so I'm not sure what values I'm mixing here, but they're probably somewhere in the right area. Don't want too small a brush for this. Let's try this one actually. Don't really like this brush, but I'll I never have liked it much before, but let's give it a go and see. We'll give we'll give him a try. So there's too much orange in this cloth at the moment. So I'm bringing in more of this um, very low chroma purple, basically. I know it seems wrong. It seems like it shouldn't be the right color, but, but it, it properly is the right color. And the very light, lighter parts. What I'm mostly interested to hear is getting the plane change to work. That's what I'm mostly thinking about. I kind of like this. There's a, there's a diagonal shadow. It would actually be like down here somewhere, but I, I might move it up a bit because I, I think I might. Oh, here comes the sun again. Drat it. That's so frustrating. As I say, it's fine for me. I can, I can, my eyes can adjust pretty well, but it's difficult for the cameras. They have a hard time with it. Hello, Marianne. Nice to see you. Oh, David says, for example, talking about painting, not what you see. For example, I can see a fairly firm edge to the back pair, but Paul hasn't painted it at all. It's the tyranny of the motif. I'm totally stealing that phrase. The tyranny of the motif. What a brilliant phrase. I love that. The tyranny of the motif. Yeah. Very well put. So at the moment, I'm mostly, what am I doing? I'm thinking about values and trying to establish a plane change. Um, I'm going to need a lot more of this. Thinking about the color shift as well, but not so much. I just want to get this kind of, it's nice because it's, uh, everything is really, really subtle. The colors are all really subtle in this painting, except for the pairs, which are fairly high chroma. Yeah, I've taken this edge out completely. I love doing that. Just remove it. Just let it bleed out into nothingness. And I've also let that value be much lighter than it should really be. Back there. You know, but I, I just, there's something I like about it at the moment. It, it's just the way it went. Uh, so it's going to... It's going to live like I'm just going to live with it like that for a little bit. Do, do the rest of the painting as it, as it grabs me and then, and then see how I feel about it as I go through. And then as we go down into shadow, this is going to go a little bit more towards orange. So I'm going to bring some raw umber in. 
might I might bring in uh, some. It's not going to be enough. I might bring in some titanium white as well because it's a very It's more a bluish white. I've got lead, lead white here. Lead is fine, you know. Yeah, so anyone who hasn't been here before, what basically happens is I'm trying to I'm trying to keep these um regular now, the streams on Wednesdays. Look at the light gone, the light gone again. Uh so basically just an informal hangout and a chat while I paint. That's all it is. I like to chat. With people while I'm painting it keeps me in touch with you all and that is nice first started doing this during lock the first lock COVID lockdown um, and I thought well you know it would be a nice thing to do for everybody who's kind of stuck at home on their own like which it was all of us at the time but also I think as as time went on I realized that I needed it as well. I enjoyed it very much. And it's been it's been a while since I've done it regularly. I've just been very busy teaching. I haven't even been painting much of my own stuff. See, I think that's getting too orange. But I it's like an itch you can't scratch. You can only you can only not do it for so long before you you feel you need to be back again before you need to paint. Little man wants in. So when I started roughing this in before, I let a lot of raw umber get into it, which I'm trying to take out now. I'm just, I'm trying not to get too worked up about Come on then. The individual bits, so I, I, I'm squinting right down and I'm just trying to put generally values down at the moment until it starts to work and it's not working yet as I, as I really as I want it to. I know, little fella. I know, but I must paint. I like this area here with its vagueness. Good, Cathy, thank you. Ginia says, in naming a colour, I'm so used to naming the primary red, yellow, blue first. It's difficult to adjust, yeah. And if you think in terms of those colours, those will be the colours that you work with. You see it a lot. I don't mean to decry abstract painting because I don't, you know, I'm not a huge fan, but I don't dislike it all by any means. And, um, yeah, I just don't do it myself. And uh, what you find is, you can really tell, I believe anyway, this is my theory. You can tell the difference between an abstract painter who has learnt to paint realistically first because their colour is um, subtle. Whereas people who have never learnt to paint realistically tend, I'm not saying always, tend to use more simplified colour and, you know, what, what we think about is is what ends up here, you know, on the on the panel to a large part, and I'm, I, I imagine that's even more true with abstract painting, and um, you know, you find a lot of abstract paintings with very obvious red, yellow, and blue areas. What little fellow? I know, but I'm busy. I'm sorry. Whereas when you see an abstract painter who obviously really knows colour well, they make something quite different, I think. You know, I like, I really like, one of the things that I really, that makes an abstract painting stand out for me is if it has uh, 
kind of subtle, subtle color and mark making. And then, you know, they can be really beautiful. Let's try and sort this out. So I'm not, you know, I'm not against it by any means. I suppose I just don't like ill-considered painting, whether it's realistic or not, if you know what I mean. Oh dear, you're getting very demanding, aren't you? What is it? Hey, what is it, little man? I know. Sorry, cat is demanding a pat, which is a good time for me to have a look and think about what I'm doing. So, <clears throat> my painting is is um, working out darker overall. I'm trying to bring up the bring up the exposure, um, which is inevitable because my value. Oh, and then the sun comes out. Do you know what I mean? It's so difficult. My value range is so limited. And we're mostly limited in the lights. Like our, our value range of paint isn't just a compressed version of what's there in reality. We're, we're limited in the lights more than we are in the darks. So paintings often look darker, but I've deliberately brought down the shadows of the pairs because I wanted the light side to, to show, you know, I wanted to make a strong um, light and dark composition. This is such a nightmare today. I'm, I'm really sorry about the light. It is literally all over the place. I'm trying to bring the cameras up and down with the light, but it's, it's very difficult to do. I'm reaching, now it's gone suddenly very overcast and I'm reaching the limits of what I can change with the cameras. Something isn't quite working here with a plain change on the cloth. This brush isn't so bad, maybe I'll... It's good for covering big areas. I've only just started painting more regularly bigger. I mean, this isn't a massive panel. But for a long time I painted very small, but I feel the need to um, well, I just want a bit more space for the brush now. And I want to start painting some bigger compositions like closer to life size as well. And uh, the only way I can do that is to work bigger. So I think this just needs to come up. I'm just trying to get that plane change to work. When, when, I'm, when I'm reasonably happy that that's there, I can move on. I'm not yet. It's coming now. Sorry, I'll catch up with the chat messages in a minute. I'm just trying to sort something out here. Values of the, mostly the values of the light and shadow on the, on the cloth here, trying to get that. 
uh, in the right place. When when it starts to feel like I, I can see a fold, then I'll know that the values are, are uh, getting somewhere near. It's partly the drawing, I suppose, as well, but mostly the values. She says, I'm new to your channel and I've watched almost all your videos. You must have a really high tolerance for boredom. I <laughs> I'm really impressed if you, you know, I've got quite a few videos up on there now, going back a long way. And the early ones are like really uh, a bit rough. Sorry, let me read the rest of what you wrote. I struggled with folds until I watched the apple painting. Now I can't stop painting folds. Ah, oh, I love painting folds. Well, Michelle says, can't be dinner time yet, surely. For kittens, apparently, yeah, for cats, it's dinner time. He, is, he reckons it's dinner time pretty forcefully. He's actually given up on me now, and he's gone to fall asleep in the corner. He's like, oh, God. You may as well sit over here and have a sleep. Is my tabletop really skewed? I think it might be really skewed. Um, so in answer to your question, Michelle, I think some of this about how, how far I'm going to resolve the, the, <clears throat> the fabric I th I think probably the way I'm looking at it now is is some of it most of it is going to be pretty loose like this and then I'm going to take a few small areas and try and finish them more carefully um damn so that uh it, it kind of creates the the feeling of the cloth I'm not I'm not happy with what's happening down here in the cloth area yet I think it, it looks clumsy and it's not convincing me that it could be cloth at the moment. So something needs to happen here. Um, but at the moment, I, I really just, I want to get the overall kind of The overall values in I think it's I think it's going all right. Just uh, not there yet. Thanks, Casey. 
out plein air painting brilliant oh and now we're the light is coming back up i've got to bring the cameras back down again a bit um i think it might i think it might work out all right this painting i think it might it might conceivably work out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always in two minds about cloth because I really like painting it. You know, I like painting cloth. I like just sitting and spending hours doing all the little folds. Um, but, you know, to be fair, I'm, I'm not sure this painting really needs it. I, I want to resolve this area now. Now that this is filled in, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this and thinking well that looks flat now it looks like it needs more definition about some texture of what's going on there i just wanted to get the colors and the values in down here so that i could see how things were gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna work across the whole painting and i'm also i'm not sure about this actually i'm not sure about that, this whole area I mean, you can see now there's a really defined cast shadow on the subject that wasn't there earlier on. Um, I'm going to try use a different brush because I don't want it to look the same, but I think I'm going to try. Let's mix something. I'm going to try bringing that value down just a little bit in the background there. What have I got? About value five back here. So I'm going to try mixing something close-ish to a neutral, a slightly lower value. Putting a little bit in and see. Because I think what, what might happen is if I bring this down is that these bits here, the light parts, will, will um, be more noticeable. I'm squinting down and I'm just wondering if that background value there is a little bit distracting maybe. And I wonder if I brought it down, not that far. Ooh. A little bit. It might change the kind of the balance. Here comes the sun. Problem is, like, I've got this here, so I need to be careful about that. Maybe darker. So all of this, before I started today, the whole I covered the whole of the surface of the painting with um, with a, a thin layer of oil cut with a, a small amount of uh, terps. So that everywhere I paint, I'm basically painting into oil. Which just helps the paint go on. You don't end up with the, you know, unpleasant sort of textures. But be careful here because I don't want to lose this. Just that smoky area. That's going to be too dark.
I'm also tempted. There's a lot of background here, and I'm tempted to do to do something with it. It's uh, related to the colour of the pair. The pairs are standing out nice now, I think. That's green gold. Sorry, I'll catch up in a minute. I'm in the middle of a. I feel like I'm kind of on. on I'm, I'm on the edge of a cliff a little bit with this, and I, I don't want to. I just don't want to get something badly wrong and think, oh God, why did I do that? So what I, let me tell you what I'm thinking about whilst I'm doing this. I'm thinking about putting some colour into the background. Uh, in a very subtle way. So I'm trying to mix up a couple of colors that are the, the same value. As what I'm putting in the background there, low chroma still. <clears throat> uh, that's way too much. But subtle hue shifts. So I've got um, like a purplish gray and a greenish gray. The greenish gray is from the pears and the purplish gray is from the cloth. And I'm looking at them and just wondering if they look nice together and if I can try out. Not sure I mixed enough of that. Let's mix a bit more of the purple grey. So uh, I suppose I'm sort of picking up colours that are elsewhere in the painting. It's a, it's a subtle painting, really. I mean, it's not like there's much colour to shout or anything. It's not shouting. The only high chroma is the pears. Lighter version of that. And a lighter version of the green. So I want these to be the same value. So I'm, I'm uh, what I'm. I don't know what. What am I trying to do? Add a bit of texture and a bit of life in the background here that isn't. I mean, you could argue that it's not strictly there. I mean, it's not. But I do like to play about with this stuff a little bit. I suppose a lot of the time I'm just, each time I do another big area, I'm looking at the bits I've already done and wondering what, what I might want to change. Trying to bring the light back a little bit. So I've got a low chroma, like a purple, a red blue, and a low chroma green both of which colours are in the composition already. 
Like the purple is from here and the green is obviously from the pears. And I'm putting them together with the palette knife where they're the same value. So, you know, it's, it's less obvious if you like. But now I'm not sure about this. I kind of feel like I'm going to take that out more. Hello, Brandon. Nice to see you. Leader says the colours of the pears is even brighter now with the white of the cloth. Yeah, they're standing out really nice. They might be too much. I think they're all right though. You can see the real pears have gone quite yellow now. They're quite yellow. So this is kind of what's coming out of this is is the the low chroma purple against the green, I suppose, really. I'm not the more I get through this the less I'm bothered about bringing in that um, bringing in that shadow the cast shadow I'm not too bothered about that I have a feeling that if I just finish off the background a little bit and then I just bring some details in in the cloth and then I want to come back into this probably on another another session and really make this bit live there of the pot then I think it will probably be pretty much uh, done. Possibly. I guess I could decide that it's not and want to change something. But Camera is not really very good at picking that up because the the, the values are match. I'm matching the values to what's already there. I'm putting in like um some red in, well like reddish into the background. Probably end up painting it all out again tomorrow just experimenting a little bit with what might work there and what might not. None of it is actually there. So I'm not really decided on whether I want it or not. I think what I want to do now is probably the next stage is to bring in some like a really what I like to do is in some places to bring in like a really startling like a really startling level of realism if I can just in a couple of spots that can make the whole thing sort of sing and I think it's going to be the texture of the pot here I really want to bring out the value is working all right I think I'm going to uh, just knock some of that texture back a little bit with a dry brush. Ginger says, I love your generosity in demystifying the process. That's pretty much my... 
that's pretty much my mission. <laughs> that is my mission, yes. Um, for myself as well, and taking us through your decisions. We all have so many decisions to make in every piece. So true. The struggle is real and normal, no matter how experienced we are or not. Totally true, Jinya. Totally true. Um, need some darker values in the cloth, that's what I need. I do need some darker values in the cloth. I think now, looking at the whole thing. I think this is what my cloth was missing. It needed some darker values, even in the light, on, on where the plane change is where, because this front plane doesn't have as much light falling on it as the top plane. So bringing those values down a bit is seeming to uh, bring the cloth out more. Um, I'm just looking at the overall balance because I've been guilty of painting the values close to what I see when actually I need to the values need to make sense in the picture which means in some places they need to be like darker to work oh that was nice I like that there I like that I like a diagonal there Hello, Christopher, good to see you. Yeah, I think we're probably, we're maybe not far off now. I think maybe there's too much chroma over here, which I'm tempted to drop that. I'm not sure though. I mean, I don't know how much of that is just what I'm actually seeing in the subject or what, what I think is going to be right for the painting. It's not always easy to decide. Just try taking some out and see what happens. Yeah, no, I like that, I think. Drop chroma over here, except for the red bits that I put in. Take that brown out. Ah, uh, no, I didn't like that, though. Took too much out. But I became too opaque. Sun, too much sun. Christopher, have you given more thought to a continuation of the Keys to Colour workshop? I know you really want to do that, don't you? I'm actually in the middle of putting a, a, a something different together at the moment. I do want to do that, and I think it's a great idea. At the moment, I'm putting together a workshop which is going to be uh, later this month. And it's going to be, I'm really liking the way this painting is going now. Something is starting to come. And it's going to be about, it's about seeing like a painter. You know, the way that you, one of the biggest problems that I see in all the workshops that I've taught, one of the things that I've tried many times to find a way around is people have a strong tendency to go for detail too soon. And tend to paint... I think some of the, um, you could say, inaccuracies that come out in the painting are often caused by th thinking about the subject as a thing rather than as shapes of light. And um, ah, talking of light, the sun is right in the room now. 
very hard for me, even me, to judge now the colours. So I, I've been, I had a bit of a, a moment earlier on today when I, I've been giving this a lot of thought. You know, sometimes when you think about something for a few days and then suddenly you, you like you ruminate on it, you dream about it and then you hit an answer. <laughs> and I saw a series of exercises in my mind in which to, to help people basically get away from the detail and to and to get to be able to nail the values the shapes like all of it and um and it's quite a simple idea actually but i think it's going to be very powerful and instead of what i usually do is give people a reference photo and then show ways to approach painting it this what I'm thinking about doing now, this time round, is, is not sharing the reference photo until near the end of the painting and showing the abstract build up first. So you would have, it wouldn't even be clear light and shadow to begin with or clear objects. It would be the values, the shapes. And also when you're at that stage, that's the best time to be thinking about the composition, the crops. So people would be able to make their own crops of the subject. I'm really excited about this idea. I don't know how well I'm explaining it, but th this is the workshop I'm putting together now. And, ah, uh, oh, sun again, coming and going. So frustrating. Go away, sun. And I think this is one of the differences, one of the big differences between paintings that really sing out strongly and ones that look like almost there. I just want to start just suggesting some more of the chroma in this pot. Um, because there's some really, now that the form is pretty much there, there's some areas of slightly higher chroma. I just want to start to suggest those. Be careful where I bring them in though. I need to keep the values constant. So I'm thinking, I'm talking about two things at the same time. I'm talking about this workshop and thinking, I'm really excited about this. So it'll be a series of exercises that eventually develop. So it's like you would start with the abstract design and the abstract color shapes and value shapes without knowing what the subject was, although it probably wouldn't take very long before it became obvious. And then gradually refine and only get the photo with the detail at the end. So you don't have an opportunity to get lost in it in the detail. This is yeah, and, and uh, uh, blurred reference, I've tried that one and it worked to an extent. You were there, I think, Michelle, when we did a completely blurred version of a rose and then brought in the edges afterwards. Um, I don't want to give it up to the software, if you know what I mean, to decide how that's done. So it will be basically working from painted reference using Monsell to nail the values and the colors. Everything will be soft edged to begin with and then selectively bring in hard edges. And to, um, I want people to have the experience coming off their own brush of, of how you think about painting light and shadow with all of the thingness removed. I mean, it's come from this workshop that we've just done, the Alla Prima flower painting, where, you know, I was stressing all the way through. It's about painting light and shadow. It's not about things. The more you think about the thing, the more you lose the painting. Um, and, uh, and I'm always trying to find more effective ways to teach that. It's basically, that's kind of the core of what I teach, I suppose. And I just had this bright idea. So this is uh, this is what I'm thinking about at the moment. But anyway, but uh, sorry, uh, that doesn't answer your that doesn't answer your question, uh, Christopher. Yes, I do want to do that. Um, but at the moment, I'm I'm kind of I'm a little bit caught up with enthusiasm for this idea. <laughs> So uh, I think we're getting close. I think I still need to bring some values down on the cloth. I'm, I'm fighting through these light changes. 
I'm trying to ignore them and keep going because I, I can see it starting to get to that point where everything starts to come together and you see all the relationships begin to work and it starts to make sense. I think I still need lower values and some of these cloth areas. Yeah, I do. So this bit I brought a bit in, which is actually not in the crop of the subject that I'm doing, but I want that in there. Um, but I also need to give a lot of thought to what will come next on an advanced color course. You know, what exactly would be covered and how. Um, that, that, the color course took years to put together. You know, it's been kind of refined and changed over years. So, um, you know, it, it will take time to come up with um, an, an advanced uh, version, if you like, of that. It will take me a little while. I, basically, I spend a long time thinking about things before I put them out. And uh, I, I understand your frustration, and I know you, you, you really want to get on with that, and I, I do get it. But I need to make sure it's right. I'm, getting, I'm losing the overall, I'm losing the big, the big picture here a little bit. So I think probably at this point, it is just a little bit more work on some little bits of the cloth, probably, oops, sorry, probably just around here. And then a bit more work just to bring some texture in on the lights of the pot. And I, I think it will be, um, it will be close to done. And it's kind of hard to decide until that goes in, but I need a break now because I'm at the point where I'm having difficulty deciding whether the changes that I'm making now are helping or not. And that's always, a, a, to me, that's kind of a sign that I need to think about having a break, <laughs> having a break and, and uh, a s sit back and look at it for a while. It's one of the, actually, funnily enough, is one of the difficulties with streaming live is I tend sometimes, I get lost in what I'm talking about and I end up just painting without really thinking about what I'm doing too much. And um, that can, I think I've just started doing that. And I want to stop at this point before I do too much of that. I need to think about that cloth, but I think we're getting there. I like the background. I'll, I'm going to keep this. I like all of this. I just want to be, oh, bring this right out. And then a little bit of detail on the cloth. And I think we're probably nearly there. Michelle says, I found the detailed subject much easier to paint than the simpler things, mainly because I couldn't really resolve what the things were. Yeah, this is what I want to do. So it's, it's um, I mean, you have a really strong values anyway, Michelle, um, and really strong drawing. Um, this I'm imagining as being something to help people get to the next level of their, their, their values and drawing. So I, I'm looking at things from a point of view of um, how can I describe it? Like the, the general situation of what I see in a, in a lot of people's work whom I teach and, and what I can do in order to improve that, what I can do in order to, in order to help them get further uh, for the, the, the most, the greatest number of people that I can, you know, you know. Um, but, and that's where this really is coming from. So I'm looking at, at things that I see a lot and trying to think of ways that I can, 
help with them. Problems that I see a lot. Let's bring that up. I'm going to have to stop painting now. I really am because I'm, I'm going to end up um, messing something up if I'm not very careful. Quite happy with progress so far today. Probably going to paint a little bit more later. We'll see. But I, I doubt if I'll be streaming this one again because it's almost done now. It's not far off finished. Um, and I probably will be on with something else soon. Got another couple of ideas for things that I'd like to. Here comes the sun again. The light is right in the studio now. It's becoming a real nightmare to paint as well. Pretty soon there's going to be direct sunlight coming into my shadow box. And at that point it really becomes completely untenable and I, and I have to stop in any case. Um, but thanks very much everybody for coming along today. Hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Thank you, Mariana. What a lovely thing to say. It's timeless. That's a really nice thing to say. I mean, you know what? I'm always going for a kind of a restful sort of a calmness, I suppose. It's that kind of feeling calm. And um, I think it's starting to come. I'm going to sign off now anyway. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming for coming and I, I, I hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll see you again next Wednesday if not before bye for now